And also in Singapore is looking to cut down on waste. One sector which stands to benefit is the food industry. Here's a bit of a tidbit for you. Each year, Singapore loses 342,000 tons of food. That is equivalent to $2.54 billion worth of food waste. And to reduce this, a recent Singapore Environment Council study recommends a circular food economy. And we have the council's chairman, Isabella Lowe, with us tonight to help us understand that. So, Isabella, a circular food economy? Uh, Mm -hmm. Explain. I'll just explain that very simply. It's like uh, closing the loop in the water. Um, you have a thing called a food circular economy in the same like for like. If you can actually optimize the entire supply chain, all the imported foods that we bring in, if we can understand how each equation works and synchronize with one another, you have a full circular economy. Okay. Now, what this study had showed up is something like 2.54 billion dollars worth of food loss that could have been diverted to good use. In other mm. words, it, the, it could have gone into back to a supermarket. It could have gone into other things like uh, you could have sliced and diced it and made it into um, apple pie or it can be processed into juices or it could simply have gone into other products like ingredients for detergents. So what we are trying to advocate is actually a new term called a fourth food basket. So it creates new economy, new jobs, new opportunities, and new innovation. Okay, so you said food loss, uh, right. but where is this food loss coming from? Mm -hmm. A lot of it is actually to do with very poor handling. I'll, okay. I'll start off with that. When we talk about cold chain management, you know, a lot of the perishable foods needs to be transported from harvest, whether it's across the border mm. or it's flown in right through to the distribution channels of the supermarket. Uh, that whole thing is called a cold chain management. Uh, unfortunately, in Singapore, it's a bit disjointed as what the study had showed up. So there needs to be more optimization, needs to be more thought through from each industry segment right down to warehouse. So each level along the way, Absolutely. the food, loss is lost, food is lost on each part of That's that. Right. Okay, That's so right. what, are the, what is the SEC outlined then, three approaches to reduce this Food loss. So talk okay. us through them. Um, so I think we cut it up into three segments mm. upstream, midstream, and downstream, yeah, in terms of consumers. In the upstream portion of it, a lot of it has to do with post harvesting. So a lot of standards maybe need to be applied to some of the handling of the distributors that bring it in. And at the midstream, it's where the distribution, the warehouses, again, to do with cold management, cold storage, uh, you know, simple things like even temperature control. But a lot of it has to do with perishable goods and handling. Mm. Let's talk about a bit of downstream. The downstream at the consumer end, we did a survey at the fridge, yes. We did a 1,000 survey to find out what was, in, what was going on. And in, in fact, people's uh, fridges. That's right. Yeah. And we found that the waste there, at unconsumed waste, is talking about something like 10%. In other words, uncooked food, different mm. from some of the statistics that you have seen. Um, so to us, it's a value that could have gone somewhere else. Yeah. So on the unconsumed end, we also we shored up that actually 20% of our people, not bad, are very good shoppers. In other words, what's a savvy shopper? They really plan in advance. And more importantly, they actually do come up with a, a shopping list. Uh, and they shop more than once uh, a week, which is a, a something that's quite new. Everybody, everybody would think that if you shop uh, once a week, it would be optimal. Actually, no. Actually, if you shop a little wiser, it would be a little bit more than once a week to get it right. Ah, okay, so, so that you don't overbuy and then you run the, the risk of having perishable food that absolutely. you can't even time. Absolutely. So anyway, that, that's the whole economy, is mm. to unlock this $2.54 billion worth of food loss that's left on the table. So that's, right. uh, t you're talking about sort of efficiencies then and making sure that the system, that's you know, right. works sort of in unison with each other. Yes. The study also suggests that Singapore could be a, a hub for transforming food into products as well. Uh, talk, us about, talk to us about that. Well, you know, let's go back to the egg industry. The egg industry is a very good example. Mm. Uh, Ten years ago, uh, it was producing suboptimally. No doubt they only supply X percent of eggs uh, to Singapore. 90% uh, is still imported uh, from abroad. But they were able to up the production by 30% over a span of just 10 years. And that 
upping med technology planning. Mm. And you know what? Their waste is down to 1%. That is amazing. And by the way, Singaporeans hardly throw their eggs away. And I've always wondered why. Because you can do so much with it. Maybe it's a, it's a thing of the past. I don't know. And that's probably <laughs> perhaps a great example of how to make it use or buy it Correct. and use it all properly before Correct. it becomes perishable. Thank Plus, you. Our, our study actually is not just eggs. It's mm. uh, vegetables as well as yep. fish. So and, they, and they can be work done in all those areas to many. become more efficient when it comes to saving and not having so much food waste. Thank you so much. Thank you again. Yeah, Isabella Lowe, Chairman of the Singapore Environment Council.